everyone. I'm trying to get my water in. I start every live with water because I know I'm going to be talking. But if this is your first time coming across me, I am Dr. Marvette Lacey. I work with doctoral students to write their dissertations in 12 months, graduate, and turn that research into a six-figure business because that's my journey. And so I just want to talk to you about my journey of being a doc student saying I'm going to boldly start a business. If you don't know, I graduated from the University of Georgia and I graduated from the College Student Affairs Administration Program. Um, and probably within my second year of that program, I was in there for four years, I realized that higher education was not going to be it for me, that I couldn't be nobody's faculty. I wasn't going to be nobody's like, I'm not publishing or I'm not trying to reach for no tenure. I, I don't want it. I don't want it. And I was trying to figure out what was going to come next. And I had been dabbling, like finding little things on the internet. I've been following a few people who left their job and they started like a side bis business or a side hustle. I'm so glad you found the page too. Welcome. Um, yeah, I was finding people and they were doing all these cool things. And I was like, could it, could it be possible that I start a business? And by the time I graduate, I can fully support myself. That was my thinking. It's kind of cute because I just didn't know what I didn't know. But I was like, yeah, that's going to be my plan. Now, I didn't tell anyone around me that that was my plan. Every time people asked me what was going to come next, I was like, I'm going to be somebody's. I'm going to go to a teaching institution. That's what I said. I'm going to go to a teaching institution because I thought it was a safe answer because I was too terrified to say that I wanted my own business. Because if they would have asked me why, I'm like, I don't know. I just think the education system needs to burn down and we need a new one. But can you really say that in the school of education? I don't really think you could say that. I can say that to y'all now because I don't, I don't work for nobody. But that's what I was thinking. And so I just kept trying to join all these programs, buy all these courses. And I just feel like people were saying a lot of words, but nobody was saying anything of substance. And so I did a lot of failing. I did a lot of money spent, some money wasted. I did a lot of trial and error to get to a point where now we fast forward eight years. I've been in business for eight years and I'm starting here because if you are watching this and you are someone who wants a business, I want you to know that the reason why you should listen to me is because I've been doing this for eight years. Most businesses don't last this long and I fully support me, my life. I care for people from my business and I do so without having to exploit people, without having to lie to people. I, excuse my language, but I give a fuck about people. The reason why I go so hard on this account and everything is because I genuinely care about doc students. Now, I'm saying this because the way, like different programs that I've come across, y'all see these people on the internet, everybody can go buy a podcast mic and say they do X, Y, Z, right? You hear these people who make it seem like, oh, it's just going to be so easy, like, the, or they give you very empty awful products and you probably have spent your money on things and being like none of this was worth it I, I am saying i have built a business where i care deeply for people i create things are they perfect no but i have helped so many people become doctor by the very things that i create and i want to say i want to say this up front to get people to come in but number two, so you know that what I'm about to tell you is, is not some fluff. It's not something that I just got. I'm regurgitating for somebody else. It's from what I actually have studied and lived through and I put into practice every day. This conversation, the one, one of the things that I hear a lot from students is that I need to wait until I finish a dissertation in order to start a business. And I am going to tell you three main reasons why you shouldn't do that. That's not it. I get that the logic is you want to be smart. Like you want to make sure you're pacing yourself. You want to make sure that you're not biting. What did people, what's the saying? Like I'm not biting off too much than I could chew. And that's the setup. It sounds real cute. And I believe that you believe it, but I'm about to tell you why that's not true. Because if we were to look at your, your calendar, if I had a camera following you around, if I had a camera looking at like what, how you spend your days throughout the week, how you are dividing your time, I would see that most of your time is going to fund other people's dreams and goals. I would see that you're using most of your time and your energy to build somebody else's business. 
I don't mean even about your assistantship or even about your job. I mean those extra things that you're doing so you can be more marketable in the field. Those extra experiences that you keep signing up in the community or in school where you're like, oh, it's going to help me to make connections to do a job search that I don't want to do. But we're not going to go there yet. I'm not going to go there yet. I'm saying that if I was to look at your calendar right now, you think that you're trying to save yourself time and energy so you can focus on your dissertation. But the reality of it is you're trying to save your time and attention so you can help other people. So other people can say how amazing you are to do people pleasing. Now, I didn't have any intentions of coming out the gate like this, but this is me as a business coach. You are, you are more interested in other people praising you than you doing something for you. When you start a business, it's for you. When you start a business and you say, hey, I'm going to put this out into the world, you have to be your own hype person. And so I guess the reason why I'm coming out the gate so strong is because it is true what people say. Business is tough, but not for what you, not for the reasons you may think. Business is tough because it forces you to meet all the parts of you. Every day I have to sit with all the parts of me, the parts I love, the parts I don't love, the parts I try to hide from. I am forced, I am confronted with those parts because that's what business requires. So I have to come out the gate that strong so we so we set the tone. But you telling yourself that you're being logical and smart by waiting till after the dissertation is you just giving yourself more permission to people, please. Now, number two, that, I guess that's not even number two because it's not even on, it's not even on my list, y'all, okay? But the main reason, I'm gonna go to the list and then I'll, I'll do some more stuff. But the main reason why you want to start this business now is you have to learn the skills of business. You are an expert in the content. Nobody can like, nobody else knows more about your topic, your content area than you. It's why you get a whole doctorate degree, okay? Nobody is going to be able to touch, like nobody can come to me and outsmart me. Like there's very few people who can come to me and like spar with me on a level of qualitative research. I, I wish they would try. They can't. But business is not about what you know. Business is not about how smart you are. Because if that was true, with Elon on Twitter, he wouldn't, okay? Because no shade to that man, all the shade to that man. He's not smart, okay? He has good business sense. He he recognizes an opportunity when he sees one. He he can he understands what is most likely to make money, so I will give him that. But in terms, I'm talking about like book smart, that's not him. That's not him. And you mistakenly, if you don't if you don't get started now or you don't get started sooner than you think you're ready, you you'll you won't have the time or the space to learn the skills of business. Business in this simple form is solving a problem. You are going to create a solution to a clear problem. So if you think about your dissertation, let's go here. I want you to think about your dissertation. How I define a dissertation topic, I define there's a group of people who are experiencing a problem in a particular environment. Right. And so an example of my dissertation would be black women who are most likely first generation college students who come from lower working class background. That's who? The people. The problem. They're having a hard time making it through doctoral programs to graduation. Where is this happening? In the southeast region of the United States at Research One institutions and predominantly white institutions, right? That's my topic. Now, how do I translate that into a business? It's the same thing. Who are the people you want to talk to? What is the problem they are having? Where are they having a problem? And what's the solution you're providing for them? My solution in my business is still, right? My main goal, how I started this was black women trying to get through a doctoral program. They're having trouble writing, right? I'm solving the problem of writing and being consistent in their writing practice so that they can graduate. My solution is I am going to show you how you're going to finish a dissertation in 12 months only working 10 hours a week, right? I am solving a problem. Rule number one of business is identify a problem that you have a solution to. It's really, who are the people with the problem, where are they having the problem, and what's your solution? If you can't answer those questions, you do not have a business. You are just really smart. So that's number one. You need time to learn skills of business. 
I am starting here with the problem because most people don't. They don't even think about the problem they're solving. They just think that people should hire them as a consultant because they know a lot. Here's the thing. Your consulting clients are not going to know what they need. They may reach out to you and they might be like, yeah, you know, uh, Marisol, I don't know if you're still on here, but they may be like, I'm just having, you know, I'm having trouble. You know, I'm just trying to figure out how to do therapy or clinical work in a different way. Marisol might be like, I got you. Home. Like, I can help you. I mean, and maybe she's tempted to go into her research and tell people everything that's going on. But if she was thinking from a business lens, she would have a very clear step-by-step -step process of helping them to, like, you think this is your problem, but really this is your problem and this is how I can help you. If you can narrow down that sentence, you will make so much money. I know it's not about money for a lot of you, but that's the key to business. The reason why there are so many people who you're like, how do they make so much money? How did they become so successful? Is because they understand that. If you can be very clear of, hey, person, you think this is your problem, but really this is your problem and this is how I'm going to help you. But what I see a lot of people in academia do, they just lead with, well, I know this and I can help you with this and I can create a workshop with this and I can create a training. Nobody wants to sit in your workshop. No one wants to sit in your training. No one wants to be on the phone with you. What they want is a solution. Okay, if y'all have questions, let me know because I'm going to get off that soapbox. But people start with a problem and a solution. Number two. Learning the skills of business comes down to three parts of you. There needs to be a part of you who is the visionary, who's the dreamer, who can see like, who can take very mundane situations and be like, there's a problem here and I bet I could make a solution to it, right? So there's a visionary. The second part of you is what is the person who's like a project manager, if you will. So this is the person who's like, I see the vision. And this is how these are the steps that you would need to execute that vision. And then the third part of you is the person who actually does the work to execute the vision. So let me give you an example. Right. Me as a doc student was like, it don't have to be this hard to write a dissertation. Like if people could just tell you in plain language what to do, I think it would be easier. And I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. And when I do, I'm going to tell as many doc students. That's the visionary part of me. The visionary was like, it got to be easier than what people are making it seem. The, the part of me, the project manager part of me was like, okay, what is the system? Well, if we tell people to take care of themselves and we teach people how to take care of themselves and we teach people how to actually plan because what they're doing is not planning. And then we help them to have a better relationship with their chair. I think they would be able to write there. They would show up consistently and finish their dissertation in 12 months. So then the manager of me is like, okay, how do we create systems that will help people take care of themselves, do a weekly plan, and show up to their chair? Great. The third part of me, the, the technician, the part that does the work, was like, oh, okay, yeah, we're just going to make up these five rules, and we're going to teach people how to drink water, we're going to teach them how to go to sleep. Right, we're going to show them the step-by-step -step of a plan. Let me know if you're following me. Business requires vision, the step-by-steps of how to execute the vision, and then somebody has to do the work. When you are signing up to have your own business, you're not going to, most likely, you're not going to be the person doing the work. You're going to be in the role of the visionary and the person who's like making the plan, the step-by-step -step of how to get there. The mistake that a lot of students make and a new and a lot of new business owners make is that they think, oh, because I'm really good. Like for me, I'm really good at research. So I should teach other people how to do research. Or I'm really good at publishing papers. So maybe I should teach people how to publish papers. No. Business is about solving a problem. And it is about a person who can see there is a problem. I have a solution. Let me go find other people to carry out the solution. And I run the business. The reason why, let me say, let me repeat it again. The reason why I do not want you to wait until you finish your dissertation to start, to even get started in business, is because the learning curve of being the visionary, a project manager, and the person who does the work takes a long time for you to wrap your head around and to get used to because your go-to is you're going to want to just focus on doing the work when we need a vision and we need a project manager okay the third th 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 that was number two right <laughs> the third thing and i would argue the most important your nervous system needs time 
to catch up to the reality of the way that you have been told money works does not work that way. Your nervous system is going to realize that people have been lying to me. People have been telling me that I need to trade in my hours of effort in order to make a certain amount of money. Right, so growing up, my both of my parents, they worked for the post office their entire careers. They retired. And I learned that in order to make money, I have to go to work for a certain amount of hours because I was watching them, right? So let's just say a typical shift is seven to eight hours. Well, when my parents wanted to make more money, they did overtime. And so then they would have more money. Business doesn't work that way. You are not paid by the amount of hours you show up. Business don't care nothing about your effort. And in fact, for many of you, you're going to work more hours than you ever have in your life. You're going to learn what hard work is. For some of you, though, for a lot of you, actually, you're going to say, hey, I got this thing. I created this thing and these people are going to pay you. And you're going to be sitting there like, how did I make this amount of money? And I don't feel like I did anything to earn it. Let me give you an example. I had a client. Her work is um, she does consulting work with nonprofit organization, mostly like sexual violence coalitions. And the, when she first started work with me, I put her on a timeout. It's something I do across the board, whether it's dissertation or business or whatever. I put you on a timeout because most of you are doing too much. And you need a timeout. So I told her what that looks like. I told her she could not work for two days straight, which is a lot for her. But she was like, I told her she could not work for two days straight. And that the only thing she could do is put up a link to like an old like workshop she did a year ago for a random company. I said, put that up on the Internet. Go sit down somewhere. Go watch the Golden Girls. Go do something else. But don't work. A day later, she made a thousand dollars. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm like easy money. <laughs> I'm saying this. To say she freaked out. We had to have an emergency coaching session because her brain could not understand how she was sitting on the couch. And what she was saying, three day old um, jogging pants, watching um, designing women. And how did she make a thousand dollars? I said, because you have to rearrange how you think money works. We have been sold a lie that in order for us to be able to take care of ourselves, that we have to work and we have to like um, harm ourselves in the process to do that. When there are people in this world every day, like for the for their whole lives, like it's just normal, they make money by the solutions they can come up with. They are sitting in their beds, in their living rooms, in the car, making money. And higher ed, education as a whole, has told you that the only way that you get to make money is if you have a certain degree, if you have a certain certification, if you put in these hours, if you be a good doc student and you, you sign up for all the research teams and you go to the conferences and you pay your dues, then you too maybe can make a little bit more money than the average person. But when you get into business, you realize all of that is bullshit. Nobody cares how smart you are. Nobody cares about your degrees. Nobody cares about your qualifications. They care that you can solve a problem. The only reason why I lead with Dr. Lacey is because my business is a dissertation coaching business. But in my like business, my coaching, like where I teach other people how to do business for the longest, I didn't even say I was Dr. Lacey. No one cares. They care that I can help them to grow their business. That's what they care about. Right, Danielle, thank you so much for the flowers. Right, Danielle don't even care. Like she keeps trying to figure out what I did in school, but it don't even matter at the end of the day. And it's and she actually like loves me. So it's not about shade. I'm just trying to communicate to you like it doesn't matter. What Danielle cares about is having the time, the space to be able to enjoy her life, to be with her husband, to be with her family, and not having to constantly worry about where is the money coming from? How do I structure my work day? Do I need to go get a job? Like she just gets to create amazing content and amazing photos. What I'm trying to say to you is you're going to have to learn that there's a different way of making money. You think, oh, it's going to be good if I make money in my sleep. Like, what can be so wrong about that? Most of my coaching is this. When I'm helping people make 
no matter if they're making their first $10,000 or their first $500,000, the most we're talking about is that your nervous system has to catch up with who you are, what you, how you thought the world worked, and how you thought business worked. Business comes down to, are you solving a problem for a particular type of person in a particular type of environment? Everything else is made up. As long as you can go find people who are experiencing that problem and you can say, hey, I can help you solve that problem. This is how one, two, three, they will pay you. They're not going to ask anything else. If you can speak confidently, clearly about this is how I can help you, you would make money. Have y'all been on TikTok? Because I love perusing the live section of TikTok. The people be up, they be selling. Most of those people are just regurgitating what they heard. But it's because they speak with confidence and clarity that people pay them money. And here you are, probably on your third degree, probably on your fifth certification, thinking that you're not qualified enough to start a business and make money. And it has nothing to do with that. If you are interested more in this, I am having a workshop on Sunday, February 25th. It's called the Simple Business Workshop. I am going to show you how to find, sign, and serve clients 10 hours or less. I'm not changing my model. I teach people how to write dissertations in 10 hours, and I teach people how to run businesses in 10 hours. Why? Because we got other shit to do. We got other things that we need to get done, like caring for yourself, sleeping, reading, find a hobby. Would much rather you have time to find hobbies than to think that your whole life is meant for you to be working. You know, no, no, you're human. Go be. So come in like either the link should be in the um, bio, but if you want to let me know in the comments, I'll add you. Like if you give me your email, I'll add it. I signed five clients without ever posting about what I do on here because of how my vet taught me how to work on my mindset about what's needed. Yeah, thank you, Danielle. Can you articulate, this is the problem, this is the solution, this is how I can help you. How you take your research is, then you have to identify a problem in your research. You probably, you wrote a whole chapter on it, like go to your chapter one. What is the problem? What was the research question? Those are big clues for the problems you are solving. But instead, instead of giving people this whole, like, this is all the things you could do, find one thing that if people did that, it would most likely lead them to the solution they're looking for. My friend, Humboy, he is he's amazing at writing manuscripts, submitting them for publication. I had a session with him and I said, you know, if you just make like a little um, PDF and you sold it for $25, you could easily make $1,000 on a side a month. Easily. Just easily. Why? Because the problem is people don't know they don't have it you don't have a process for writing and publishing at the rate that he does he last year submitted i think he said 14 manuscripts like it, while writing a book while doing a whole bunch of things and i was like people would love to know how you do it so if you would just write that down and sell it people would buy it and he was like really i was like yeah and most likely He's like, I'm working on it right now. I was like, you probably have too much information in there because you're real smart. Y'all are real smart. We're real smart. We're smart. And we think that we mistakenly think other people are as, as smart as us. And I don't mean no shade about this. I'm not trying to speak negatively about anyone. I'm just speaking facts. People are not as smart as you. Let me say it again because you probably are ignoring me because you don't think I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to you. People are not as smart as you. You think that the reason why people are like silent or they like nitpick at little things on your whatever, you think it's because you don't know enough. No, it is because you are so smart. You are so above everyone's like what they even consider. They didn't even think about it that they, they're just trying to find something to talk to you about. And it's easy to be like. You, you made a mistake right there than it is to be like, I have no idea what you're, what you're saying. You're so smart. You are brilliant. You are brilliant. And I just don't want you to give your brilliance away to an institution who don't give not two shits about you as a person. 
Now I'm about to get into my bag. Y'all about to, this is my soapbox. You don't have to agree, that's fine. But I, I just don't believe that the institution, the oppressive institution of higher education gives a fuck about us. They care about what we can produce. They care what they could put on the publication. Yeah, put me front and center in your video. It's diversity. They don't care about us as people. And so I'm not about to take all of my precious time and energy that we have here on this in this plane and give it to an institution who don't care about me, who would replace me the next day. I would much rather build something for me that's sustainable and it helps not only me, but all of you. I've been doing something for eight years that has been able to impact students, especially those who are with marginalized identities to feel seen, to feel heard, to feel understood, to be able to put such amazing work out into the world, just because I just show up and do what I do best, which is creating community and safe spaces for people to be them. If I was still in somebody's institution, I wouldn't be doing this work. I would be burnt out. I would be overwhelmed. I would be sad. I would probably have so many health problems because of the environment. Am I saying all institutions are like this? No. Am I saying majority are? Yes, because I read the comments. I read the op-eds. I see the articles. We had two black women, college presidents who died. We just had someone who could who completed suicide because of the pressure of working for an oppressive institution of higher education. There are a slew of folks who are talking about the pain they experience, the real life implications they experience for working for an oppressive institution. Am I saying this business is perfect? No, but I would much rather day in and day out build a business where I know, where I can see that I'm helping people than to join an oppressive institution where I think I'm helping people, where on paper we say we're here for students, but we're not doing nothing for their interest, their best interest. Start a business. I'm not saying quit a job. I'm not saying drop out your program. I'm just saying start sooner rather than later because the learning curve of growing a business is going to take a minute. It took me a minute. I started this. So I think I interrupted myself and telling my own story. But as a second year doc student, I was like, you know what? I'm about to figure this out. I see too many people who don't look like me on this internet making this happen and I know I'm smarter than them so I know I can figure it out. So I originally started with I was going to help folks process childhood trauma. I laugh at that now because where I was at that time I had no business doing that. But I was like I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna do what these people told me to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up on the internet. I'm gonna write these emails. I'm gonna do all these things and I did that for a good year and I made no money. I signed no clients. No, that's a lie. I had one client that who paid me a whopping $65. <laughs> I shout out to her though, right? But I, only, I was like, it's been a year. Only time I have one client. This ain't going to work. And I signed up with a coach and she was like, you need to switch your topic. You need to do something else. This trauma thing ain't working. So she was like, how about you're doing this whole sister circle methodology thing. How about you host sister circles? I say, like, as a business, like people going to pay me to host a sister circle like I do at work every day. And she was like, yeah, just try it out. I tried it, but I didn't like the idea of like, at that time I, just, I didn't like how it was going. And then I was talking to a friend and a friend was like, well, you, you so good at qualitative research. You're already helping people like with research and doing their dissertation. How about you help them like write their dissertations? I was like, but I'm not a doctor yet. How can I help other people do something that I haven't done yet. And that friend was like, just because you haven't done it doesn't mean you don't know how. You not working on your dissertation has nothing to do with what you know. And I was like, you're right. I am over here having a panic attack every five minutes. You're right. So then I started, I was like, I'm gonna put out a workshop. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna teach a qualitative one-on-one -on -one workshop. I'm going to help you learn the basics so that you can write your method section of your dissertation. That was my very first like product in this realm. I got two people to sign on right away and I never looked back. But then I was like, maybe I should work with people one-on-one -on -one so I can get more used to figuring out a process. Remember what I said earlier. So if you were not here, let me recap. In business, there are three parts of you. You have the visionary, the part of you that's the dreamer, the part of you that looks at 
what everybody else thinks is just how the world works, you look at it like, oh, I can make that different. So you have the visionary part of you. The second part is the project manager, the one who's like, how do we execute the vision? This is the process of executing the vision. And then the third part of you is the one who actually does the work to execute the vision. Right. So I was like, I'm going to work one on one with people because my the part who needs to be a manager and a technician, they need to work together. I don't have a process like I know a lot about qualitative research, but I don't know how to get somebody else. Like I don't have a clear system. It wasn't smooth yet. So I started working one on one with folks and I realized, oh, I'm really good at this. Because people who like, they're, I mean, now, yes, but especially in the beginning, the people who were coming to me were like folks who were in their programs for seven years. They uh, filed for an extension and they were like, the clock was running out on their extension. And I remember like one of my first clients, she had two weeks left of her extension of her doc program before they were going to make her do the entire process all over again and so she wrote her dissertation her her findings and her discussion and like did all the edits in two weeks and defended the dissertation and became doctor it was moments like that that I was like I think I'm better at this than I'm giving myself credit for I think I might be on to something so I just kept going because I I knew that I knew the content but I still didn't know how to package it nice and neatly to be able to, to be able to say you do this and you do this and you do that so I just kept going and then about like two and a half years in, I started to form my process. Did you hear me? I said in about two and a half years, I started to form my process because now I have more clients. Now more people are coming to me. And it was about this point that I was like, I can't keep working with people one on one. I need to put them in a group. And so I started what is now called the Institute. I've been doing this for four years, the Institute part, I've been doing it for four years. I am able, me as one person, I'm able to help multiple doc students at one time finish their dissertation because I allowed myself the time to learn what is my process, how do I communicate that process effectively and help people get the same solution faster. Remember what I said, business is about solving a problem and learning how to do that quickly. The faster you can help people get results, the more people will pay you money the more you will have raving fans who will sing your praises and they will go find your customers for you. I, because last year, y'all, the last two years, life tried to come for me and take me all the way out. I, I'm saying that to say, I couldn't show up on the internet the way I wanted to. I couldn't show up to market my business the way I wanted to in the last two years, but I did not have to. Because I've been so good and consistent about saying, hey, you have this problem. I can help you solve the problem. And because I actually help people solve the problem, they went out and they gave me referrals or they told their friends or they posted my link in their Facebook group or they post the link on the class back Blackboard. And it's through those efforts that I've, I've been able to have consistent clients. And it's because I had the courage to begin this process as a doc student before I even wrote a word of my dissertation, because I allowed myself that time and that space to learn the skills that I needed to be those three different versions, to be very clear in the problem I was solving, to show up, try some things, fell at it, like, oh, don't say it that way, do it this way. Because I had that practice, I was able to have a sustainable, simple business. The reason why I want you to start is because you don't have to do it the hard way in terms of how I did it because I didn't have as clear of guidance. Now I can tell you exactly what to do. Anybody on this call, I, I, I like 10 toes down. Anyone on this call, if you want to talk through it, I will tell you exactly what your business is, what you need to do to make money. And I bet within the next 90 days, you will make a thousand dollars or more. If you do exactly what I tell you to do, and I'm not going to tell you to do anything outrageous, but if you do exactly what I tell you to do, you would make at least at a minimum a thousand dollars in the next 90 days. How can I be so clear in saying this? One, I have the receipts, but number two is because I understand business. I brought my researcher's brain, my qualitative brain to business. And I was like, oh, I'm going to figure this out. And I'm going to make it very clear. Business is simple. It's so simple. And when I learned that, I was pissed. I was pissed at how simple it, was. it is. You just have to find people 
Tell them, hey, I can solve this problem and make an invitation to them for you to help them solve the problem. That's how business comes down to. And I can tell you more tangible step by step. That's what I'm going to cover in the workshop on Sunday, February 25th. I'm going to tell you exactly the thing. I'm, this is not a trick. It's not one of those workshops where you're going to come. You're going to listen to me talk about myself for two hours. That's not how I roll. We are actually going to do work. I'm going to ask you, what is your business idea? We are going to workshop that business idea. You're going to leave the workshop being very clear on if I made this as a product and I put that out into the world, these are the steps I would do to market it. These are the steps I would do to convert those people into paying clients. And these are the steps I would do to deliver the service in a top tier way. You're going to leave the workshop knowing that. So like I said, you can DM me your email address and I'll send you the confirmation. I got a few people here. I don't see any questions, um, but if you have them, I'm going to keep talking because I know there's a delay on um, Instagram, but please let me know your questions. If not, let's enjoy our Valentine's Day. If you don't have a Valentine's, it's okay. Listen, yesterday I watched 10, uh, what is it, movie 10, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. You know, watch a good rom-com flick, make you some dinner and be good. Okay, I am going to go. I don't see any questions. Thank y'all for listening. Join the workshop and I will see y'all probably tomorrow. Bye, y'all.